Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not scatter. So, out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here, it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So, you knew that I harvested where I did not plant, and gathered where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. How do we go about planning for events in our life? We normally start off with selecting a date. What day will be good to have this event? And once we get that in place, we still have a lot of work to do. So we make a task list of everything we need to get done. And we prioritize it, and we start doing the tasks. So that everything is done by the time we reach the day of the event. Everything is prepared, everything is ready. Think about doing that for a wedding, or a graduation, a baptism, you name it. The big events of life are heavily planned out so that everything goes off without a hitch, we hope. But if you even look at our everyday life, the different things we have to do during the day we may even do just a little bit of planning for it, but there's always planning to make sure we're ready to undertake that task. But the one thing we tend to forget about planning for is the biggest event of our life. 
We tend to push it off because we don't want to think about it. But St. Paul, in the letter to the Thessalonians today, puts it right in front of us. He reminds us that we need to be prepared because at an hour that we do not know, God will come. And we need to be prepared for that. And he's telling the people of Thessalonica, you should not have to worry too much because as people of faith, as Christian people, you know this day is going to come. You have faith and you should be prepared. But don't let it fall by the wayside. Don't forget each and every day to make sure you are doing things to get yourself ready for that day. Our culture likes to have us put that aside. We don't want to think about it. Whatever makes me happy right this moment is the only thing I should be concerned about. What's going to make me happy right now? Consequences, doesn't matter. As long as I'm happy at this present moment, all is well. That's our human way of thinking. That's certainly not God's way of thinking. One of my favorite television shows is The Big Bang Theory. I find it to be hilarious. I can watch them over and over and over again, which I do on TBS when I have the time. And I laugh each and every time. There are a few moral issues with the show, but overall, it's got a good point most of the time. But there's one episode that came to mind when I was preparing for this homily, and that episode starts off with Sheldon in the living room with all these whiteboards around, and on him a timeline. And he's pondering this timeline. And Leonard walks into the room and says, what are you doing now? And Sheldon's saying, well, I'm trying to figure out how long I need to live in order to make sure that I'm alive when science finally figures out how to take my consciousness and put it into a computer so I can live forever. And he's serious. And Leonard just looks at him with this look like, are you nuts or what? We shouldn't be preparing to live on this earth forever because it's not going to happen. God did not make us to live here forever. He made us to live forever, but with him, not on earth. And our gospel reading today from Matthew talks about that very much. And it's the main point of what Jesus is trying to tell the people on that day where he had this discussion. And he starts off talking about a rich man who's about to leave for a journey and to leave everything he has in the care of three of his servants. And it starts off about talking about talents. Now, they're not talents as we think of them as being gifts that God has given us. A talent is not a coin that may be misinterpreted based on the response of, to the third person by this rich man about putting money in a bank. A talent in the time of Jesus was a unit of weight, a unit of measure. And I looked it up to see what that talent actually converted to, and it's 75 and a half pounds. One talent is seven and a half, 75 and a half pounds. And the rich man was not giving not important stuff to these people. He was giving his most valued possessions to be taken care of. So figure maybe pieces of silver. The man who received five talents of these possessions would have received over 375 pounds of silver. That's a lot. That's a lot to be entrusted with. And as we go through the story, we hear how that man who's entrusted with five talents invested it and gained five more. And the man who was given two invested it and got two more back. And the man who received just one talent of this man's possessions hid them away, didn't share them, didn't invest them, and when the man came back, the rich man came back, only had that one talent to give back. God was not worried that day about our material wealth. He was not trying to tell us to invest wisely 
to put our money into mutual funds and 401k plans and other investments. He doesn't worry about that. The talents that Jesus was talking about that day was our faith. How much faith we have. How much God has given to us and how much we're willing to invest that in others. To take it out into the world and to invest it. Because I guarantee you, if you go out into this world and you start sharing your faith with other people, it'll get returned to you many times over. You'll hear about other people's faith life and that'll help yours grow. So we too, as we share with others, can multiply and double what has been given to us. That's part of what Jesus was trying to teach today. But the other part focuses on that last man. He didn't go out sharing with anybody. He didn't invest what was given to him. And in return, he got nothing back. And in fact, what was given back to the rich man was taken away. You're not getting anything because you didn't find it important enough to share. If we don't share our faith with others, we'll lose what we have because we're not sharing it. We're not talking about it. It gets hidden away. What we don't share, we can't get back. The rich man told that man who received one talent, what were you thinking? Why didn't you share it? And his response was, because I know that you reap from where you do not sow. You're a tough person. And the rich man said, you are right, I do. I do reap from where I don't sow. All the more why you should have shared. God depends on us to go out and re- sow into the world, to sow faith in God to others who may have never heard or experienced God in their life. We are called to help the kingdom of God grow by sowing our faith life in other people. Because one day, as St. Paul reminds us, we're going to be called home. And we're going to stand before God. He's going to ask, what did you do with all that faith I gave you? The last thing we want to do is be like that third person. And have to say, well, I hid it away. I didn't share it. I didn't want to lose it. We want to be like the first and the second person who went out and invested our faith in others. As parents and as grandparents, as aunts and uncles, godparents, whatever, we're called to share the faith with the young folks and not so young who we may work with who have no faith life. We're called to pass on the faith, to being the person who brings more souls to God. Because that day that we don't know the time and the hour, when we are called home, and we stand before God, we can proudly say, thank you for the faith you gave me, God. And I went out and shared the best as I could. And look at all these people I brought to you. And he will say, well done. Well done. You understood what I taught and what I expected. Thank you for bringing these souls to me. Now welcome home. Who are we going to be like? Are we going to be like the first and second servants who shared with the world the faith that we have been given so that we can bring others to God's kingdom? Or are we going to be like the third who kept it all to ourselves and lost it anyway?